The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, condemns reports that Malian and foreign soldiers may have summarily executed at least 25 people in Welingara village in the central Nara region on January 26. Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from Geneva. In addition to reports that soldiers killed at least 25 people in Wellingara last week, the UN Rights Chief is alarmed by reports of civilian massacres in two other villages, Ogota and Oimbi, in the Bandiagara region over the weekend. Unidentified gunmen reportedly attacked and killed about 30 civilians. Saif Magano is the UN human rights spokesperson. He tells VOA by phone from Nairobi that similar atrocities have taken place in recent months. He says his office has confirmed two deadly attacks in September and October. On those occasions, he says, members of the Malian armed forces and allied foreign military personnel allegedly executed at least 31 civilians. So this seems to be a trend where the military in this part of Mali, together with their foreign military allies, round up young people, detain them, and execute them summarily without reason. They don't, there's no telling why they do that, and that's why the High Commissioner is appalled by this and wants it to end and for it to be investigated. Magano says the High Commissioner wants the perpetrators to be held to account. Since UN peacekeeping troops withdrew from Mali last year, he says it has been difficult for his office to monitor, document, verify, and evaluate conditions in the country. And he says the withdrawal of the UN troops has not improved things in Mali. On the contrary, Contrary, Magano says human rights violations continue to be rampant and are likely to have escalated. He says his office has been in touch with Mali authorities about the alleged massacres and the need for a transparent investigation into the killings. When we speak to them, they tell us that they are committed to upholding their uh, international human, human rights obligations. But as they say, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, we need to see an improvement on the ground. Magano says the killings, violations, and arbitrary detentions must stop, especially those in which the authorities appear to be complicit. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. In Liberia, security services are jointly probing an alleged assault on President Joseph Boakai as he attended a university graduation. Denise Nipson reports from Monrovia. The country went into a panic mode Tuesday afternoon when a live video showed the hand of a man who approached the president from behind and put his arm around him, touching his chest before being pulled away by security. Boyka at the time was in a crowd and speaking with faculty members at the graduation ceremony of the United Methodist University. The incident has sparked a debate among Liberians within and outside of the country country among those wanting to know the identity of the person and his intentions. Presidential Press Secretary Kula Fofana did not tell VOA if the police apprehended the alleged perpetrator, but she confirmed the incident and said that John's security is investigating persons of interest. What I can further confirm is that there is an active investigation ongoing. The police have investigated and continue to investigate persons of interest around the incident. That is as far as the information I can provide. At the appropriate time, all of the information from our investigative team that is comprising of both the executive protection service as well as the Liberian National Police. So there's an active on security and upon the conclusion of that investigation, we'll provide you all with this fact as we have them. A Liberian youth, Ernest Mwabai, told VOA he blames presidential security for breach. I was a first man. TPS, TPS, we get in the security that, that gives protection to our president. There was a huge vulnerability from the security towards our president. But uh, quickly to mention, the action by one of the citizens to have touched the president for me in my mind, I did not 
year as a wrong thing. Especially in a time of us just leaving campaign. Everybody is staying in their campaign mood, want to see a president at that type of function. Meanwhile, the governor of the Central Bank of Liberia appeared before the House of Representatives on, on Thursday following a report from President Boakai that former President George Weir was not accurate when he said his administration left 40 million United States dollars in the Treasury. In his State of the Nation speech on January 29, President Boaka said the actual amount is United States dollar 20.5 million, but the bank governor's report showed that separate balances from both United States dollar and Liberian dollars as of December 31, 2023 and January 19, 2024 is equivalent to the amount the former president said he left there. Liberians are wondering who is telling the truth. For VOS Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nepsi in Morovia, Liberia. At least three people have been confirmed dead and 280 injured following a gas explosion on Thursday night at Embakasi in the Kenyan capital Nairobi. Several families were also displaced and pro property of unknown value destroyed during the incident that happened a few minutes to midnight. In a statement on Friday morning, government spokesman Isaac Mauler said the two died while being attended to at a city hospital. Of the injured, 21 are receiving treatment at the Kenyatta National Hospital, 160 at Mama Lucy Kibaki Hospital, 19 at Mbaka Mbagathi Hospital, 14 at Modern Komarok Hospital, and 8 at Nairobi West Hospital. The government has also clarified that the explosion did take place in a gas refilling plant as it had stated in a previous update. One lolly of an unknown legislation number that was loaded with gas exploded, igniting a huge ball of fire that spread widely, Mr. Maurua said. A flying gas cylinder hit Oliento Godon burning down the said Godon which deals with garments and textiles, he added. The residents first reported hearing a big explosion followed by a huge ball of fire that engulfed the area. Several explosions and the fireball sent to residents into panic. The inferno also damaged several vehicles and commercial properties, including small and medium-sized businesses, the government spokesman said. The scene has now been secured and command center is now in place to help coordinate rescue operations and other intervention efforts.